everybody, welcome to episode 6 of Me Time Gamer Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Fournier, creator and editor-in-chief of MeTimeGamer.com. I hope everybody is, go- is doing well today. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you're new, welcome. Uh, before I start, I would like to uh, take a minute to talk about something in the podcasting world that happened this week. Uh, if you listen to multiple podcasts about gaming, like myself, you know, you know what Beyond is. And by now, you know that Greg Miller and Car- Colin Moriarty have left IGN to pursue their own dreams, which you can go check out at kindoffunny.com. Uh, I would like to uh, congratulate them on their new project, but also invite you guys, if you haven't already done done so, to uh, listen to their last Beyond episode, which happened this week. Why am I talking about another podcast? It's quite simple. Beyond, Greg, and Colin had an impact on shaping this podcast, and I know many others... Many others and I would like to thank them for all their, for all everything they they contributed to the game, contributed to gaming, podcasting, and everything in between. For about almost two years now, when I started listening to the podcasts, pot to podcasts in general, they were part of the of the original group of podcast shows I'd listened to. From pregnant pauses to funny joke, these guys always considered the listeners as friend, as friends, and it always felt like. We were part of any inside joke, or or if like we were at the bar talking to old friends. Um, during the last episode, Greg and Colin got very emotional, and you felt the impact that this show had on, in their careers. I myself even got teary teary, teary eyes, uh, and got weird looks from my coworkers. And just for reference sake, I work in a machine shop, so you get how why I got weird looks. <laughs> so, um, I, I'll end this little tribute by wishing Greg, Colin, Greg, Colin, Nick, and Tim good luck on their new project and beyond. All right, so so with, with that out of the way, we'll start with the new releases for the week of February 17th, 2015. The first game coming out on, um, on the 20th of, a bit closer to the end of the week, we got The Order 1886, for PS4. If you guys don't know what that is, I do recommend you go look the look at any trailer or gameplay footage. Um, it's a very interesting um, exclusive ga- exclusive game to PS4. I personally um, pre-ordered the um, the collector's edition for uh, the, uh, the the base game is fifty nine ninety nine, and for twenty dollars more, you can buy the collector's edition, which come with a which c- comes with a um, uh, actually, a statuette that comes with, so that's pretty cool. You get the steel book, you get soundtrack, a downloadable soundtrack. You get, uh, I think, you get, you get some uh, art. Uh, you get a couple of stickers and stuff like that. For twenty bucks more, I would say it's worth it to to check that out. If you guys are willing to fork up the extra twenty dollars, and better hurry up. There's only a week, so they might have uh, low stock. So for the next game coming out the this next week, you got Dead or Alive 5 Last Round coming to PS4, PS3, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC. You also have Kirby, The Rainbow Curse coming to Wii U. That's a game I haven't played in a lot. Not that game, but Kirby was one of my favorite games when I was younger. One of my favorite beside Mario and other games like that. Um, and the last game on my list uh, for February 17th, you got XK for 3DS. So that's it for the new releases for the for that week for next week. So let's let's go straight on to this week in news. First, uh, first little piece of news is um, Dying Light gets uh, details for their season pass. So, um, so basically, they they modeled they they were talking about their we're getting three three releases in the next couple of months of of for se- for their season pass, which is which is twenty dollars you can buy right now. Uh, their first uh, first first pack for the season pass coming out. Is already out this week. It actually came out on Tuesday and Wednesday for PS4, if I remember correctly. It's called the Cuisine and Cargo. Uh, you get two missions that lets the player investigate a sealed off building for, and since the very first day of the outbreak, and um, it's going to let you explore. Uh, which there's a lot of uh, 
it's going to let you explore ominous corridors of once the most famous restaurant in Haran and employ both stealth and combat to re- ransack a zombie-filled loading bay at at the abandoned railroad yard. So that's pretty cool. If you guys feel like having more mission. Uh, um, yeah, so the next pack, which is due next month, it's the Ultimate Survivor Bundle. Uh, it it give, will give the player seven unique items, new unique item, three new outfits, blueprints, and some over-the-top weapons to keep killing some zombies. So that's going to be pretty cool. So, so and the last uh, the last pack that's coming out for the season pass, there might be more after. We I don't know yet, but it's called uh, Bozak Horde DLC. Uh, you, you can expect a new map, Haran, which is the Haran Stadium, if you got to Old Town part. If not, well, sorry for the spoilers. And um, it's basically a horde mode lets you play single-player or co-op play. So that's very cool. Uh, if you haven't picked up Dying Light, I do recommend... Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it later to when I tell you what I'm playing. But if you're if you're looking for an interesting game right now, Dying Light is certainly one game you should try out. For our next little piece of news, um, Resident Evil HD that came out a couple weeks ago, um, Capcom Capcom uh, sent out a press release explaining that Res- the Resident Evil HD that released for PS4 and Xbox One was the fastest selling digital game in Caps- Capcom's history in North America and Europe. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, the uh, Capcom's producer on the title... Uh, sorry if I butchered her name there, but it's Yoshiaki Hirabaishi. Commented that it's been a great it's been great to see so many positive comments from fa- comments from fans that have enjoyed this show, this new release. The team here at Capcom Japan have worked hard to bring the game to the latest latest generation of console, and are thrilled at this news in the performance. So that's always good to hear when a company is doing well when we get good news like that. So another news that actually came out on Thursday, so yesterday, I'm recording on Friday today, uh, oh, and I forgot to say sorry that I'm one day late there because I, I wasn't feeling too well yesterday, so I decided to just uh, wait a day and and we're here right now. So, all right, let's keep moving. So the next little piece of news that came out on Thursday, uh, PlayStation users can now transfer, transform sub-accounts to master accounts. So, yeah, basically you're able to, if you're using sub-accounts, because usually when you're under 18, you have to, you can't register as a master account, you have to, sorry about that, yeah, you have to register as a sub-account since you're underage, but, uh, so now you can transform them into a master account, because apparently they were having a lot of feedback that that's one thing they want to change. Right now you can only do it uh, through the website, but later we'll be able to do it from the PS4. Uh, so yeah, you can, I, apparently you can start doing it now, so, uh, so you guys can go check that out. Uh, another little piece of news, uh, for, uh, the NPDs are out for January 2015, uh, PS4 is uh, back being, uh, after two months of uh, being under Xbox One, PS4 is back on being the best-selling console for the month of January. Also leading the the pack is Dying Light. Dying Light is the best-selling game for January, so that's pretty cool information. Um, so yeah, that's it for that little piece of news. The last news I got for this week, um, Bethesda announced act- they were actually being going to uh, uh, perform, be doing their first E3 conference on June fourteenth, which is I think a week before actual the actual E3, but they're still doing a press conference related to E3, so that's going to be fun, hopefully uh, I'm still wishing that we're going to get news about Fallout 4, which would be really nice, I wouldn't think we can, ex- I don't think we, can, we will be hearing anything, uh, any news-wise verse about Elder Scrolls Online, because it's releasing on June 9th, a week before, so I don't think we're going to, they're, unless they're adding other stuff to the game and, and such, but uh, yeah, I think we're going to hear maybe a couple new games, which would be really nice if it's Fallout. <laughs> I'm probably not the only one. They've been A lot of people have been speculating about that game for a couple of years now. So uh, I think if I remember, New Vegas released in 2010 or 2011. I'm not quite sure. 
But uh, yeah, that's going to be fun to see. It's always a good game. I really enjoyed the, the Fallout series. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see that. Alright, so on to what I played. I only played one game last uh, last week, and it was Nine Light. Uh, I picked it up on Mon- on um, I picked it up on Thursday of last week, and uh, so you can actually uh, I'll talk about it right now a bit. But I'm gonna be able I'm gonna write a review for it. Uh, I should be able to get it done by the weekend or somewhere in the middle of next week. So you guys can check that out once I I get it up and written. Uh, I'm all uh, at the same time. I tested out a new uh, pair of headset, which I'm also writing a review, which should come out this weekend as all also. Um, so yeah, I played a lot of Dying Light. If you guys have looking for a sweet game to play, Dying Light is definitely a, a game of the year contender in, on my list. Um, just the parkour in the game, and then the, the crafting, the open world, even the co-op's pretty fun. Um, the missions, actually, the, a lot of the missions don't feel repetitive, which is nice. Like, you'll see, the missions are a lot of fetch mission, but it's not like, always go fetch of something. It's, it, they all feel unique, and they all present their own challenges. What's nice is there's a multiple types of zombies in the game, and they they all offer their own their own difficulty when playing. Of course, you got, if you, if you have, if you're not playing the game yet, well, you, you know that if you're not playing the game, well, there's a type of zombie in there during the night, which are very ferocious and almost all the time kill you in one shot. You can kill them when you once you get more advanced weapons, but it, it they, they're really hard to to beat uh, in the process. Uh, there is like there is guns in the game, but like what what I find interesting is you don't need to use the gun because it just it just attracts more trouble for when you when you're trying to do something while you're playing. Uh, so like. The best weapons, what I've seen so far, the awesome weapons, you can add electricity, burning, all those kind of stu- things, and it, it's really fun, you really get a, when you hit them, you really get a satisfying feel of, like, that you, you got the zombie, and even, like, when you can unlock uh, abilities while you play, survivor skills, agility, and combat, if I remember correctly, and all those uh, help you, like, like do, like, uh, swing better, uh, free run better, all those kind of stuff. And what what's also cool? At first, I thought I was gonna hate it, but there's actually there's no there's no uh, fast travel in the game. Like I said, I thought I was gonna hate it at first, but it actually adds a lot a lot to the game not having to fast travel because actually it actually feel more of the impact of the zombie apocalypse a bit more. So that's very interesting. So I won't go into more details so I, because I want you guys to read my review uh, next week. So, uh, but if you haven't picked up, I'll tell you at least, like, pick, do pick it up. It's, it's, it's a very good contender for a game of the year for the, for 2015. So if you guys go try it out, that's for sure. So that's everything I had a chance to play this week. I had a busy week, so, and, uh, so yeah, let's move on to, uh, Ping of the Week. So for every week I, I choose a subject, I, from my ping of the week, yeah. So ping of the week, I give uh, my sub, I, I select a subject every week, and I, uh, I give my opinion on it. But it, it can be anything from a game to a, just a certain subject. You can go see past subject I uh, in the uh, articles, that, video game articles section on the website. Uh, so this week, I decided to give my impressions on the Battlefield Hardline open beta. beta. That happened uh, from February 3rd to February 9th. They actually extended one day. So, if so, right? If you if you didn't know yet, or you weren't part of the seven million people that played it, Battlefield Hardline Open Beta happened and gave us a taste of a taste of what is to come. So it happened, like I said, from February 3rd to February 9th, and gave. And gamers were able to try out three modes and three maps, which brought back a classic mode from previous installment of the game. The first mode I tried out of the I tried out was Conquest. If you're regular to the series, you know what this mode is and what it's all about. For the beta, this mode was played on the Dust Bowl map and offered a 64-player team rumble with, if you remember, if I remember correctly, five capture point on the map. In all the modes, Conquest was my least favorite of the mode from the beta. It 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 felt a lot like Battlefield 4. That that's that's my thing. It it was very, uh 
I understand that this mode is a fan favorite and shouldn't be messed with, but I, f I feel that they could have added or changed something to make it feel fresh. It was still fun, but in in the mode modes available in the beta, it was not the one I went back to during the week. The next mode I played was Heist. This one also takes place on one map named Bank Bank Job. It has two. I would say a two sequence approach, meaning you start off both the teams are both teams are rushing to the vault of the bank. One team plays as the robbers, the other team plays as the cops. The mission of the first sequence is to attack or defend the vault. The second base and then the second um, the second uh, sequence is if you're the robber, you grab the bags and you take it to the the, the drop zone uh, and and if you're if you play as the cop well it's you play as retaking basically you have to retake the bags from the robbers and bring them back to the vault at first going into this prior with, without prior knowledge of this mode was quite confusing because the instructions were not clear but after after a while it got more enjoyable to play and because i understood what it was all about what's interesting about breaking into the vault is there isn't only one point of entry you can there's only there isn't only one point of entry. You can enter by the vault door or you can breach by the roof. I really had a good time with heist mode and I would like to see, I would see myself playing it a lot if I if if I would buy a hardline. The next mode that was available was uh hot wire. This one you were able to play in the map downtown and dust bowl. Basically what what hot wire is is basically conquest but with vehicles and there what what happens is you take the vehicles on the map there's usually five of them varying from tanker trucks to fast cars to to uh to to vans and you have to move you have to move past a certain speed for it to accumulate point and act like you uh you captured a point and what happens is enemies uh, enemies uh, the other team runs after you tries to kill you or just or detonate the car, like make the car explode and stuff like that. And honestly, this was my favorite mode in the game. Uh, just, just I usually what I was trying to do usually is get into a car and just just drive as fast as I could. And then what's nice too is when the people, the guys are in the car, is they, you, they can lean out and shoot. And the 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 the, uh, the 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 animation while they do that is actually pretty cool but i was most of the time i was driving as i actually finished uh, first place while playing uh playing in hot and hot wire uh just from driving i one time i almost drove for the same car for half the timer and got really f i finished first in my team so that was pretty fun so so yeah hot wire was actually my favorite one because it, it, it it's it's taking conquest and making it more interesting it's moving point it's not always stationary you have to like stay in one position try to block everybody from taking the base uh one other point i found interesting about the um the beta about uh yeah the beta which it showed off how you can buy items to upgrade your items and all stuff like that every time you kill take a point accumulate point it actually uh, gives you a cash gives gives you sort of a reward in cash and you can spend that cash to buy different grenades, different gun, camo, vests, uh, stuff like that, which is pretty cool compared to uh, where in, um, in uh, Battlefield 4, where you have to, uh, uh, you, they just unlock while you progress in your levels. Um, so for, so in, in for for general, generally, I really enjoyed uh, the beta. It uh, graphically it was it looked really nice. Uh, there wasn't anything that really caught my eye. Even for a beta, there wasn't anything that like popped. It's like okay, that's not supposed to happen. Or I was I didn't I, I don't remember getting stuck somewhere for no apparent reason. And um, I didn't see. I know sometimes Battlefield is known for like through shooting through walls sometimes and killing. I didn't get I didn't see that uh, while I was playing. Um what do I think of Battlefield Hardline in general? Well, I can't really give my full opinion on a beta, but I would say if 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 
if uh, hot wire and bank job and a high sorry are the only two th- new things to multiplayer i don't know if if it's just if it's just going to be the same same as battlefield 4 but if they can they can improve and add more unique jobs that would be even great so from from what i saw in the beta if they're able to keep going on down that path and i know a lot of people were are hesitant because it changes a bit a, a lot the formula because usually battlefield well you if you play battlefield you know it's it's a big war type and stuff like that this one is more cops and robbers which if if you saw the trailer for the the story mission it actually looked very interesting i well, it's always hard to try for me to try to to um to give my opinion on multiplayer games because I'm more of a single player kind of guy so the the single mission campaign really looked interesting for the, what I saw in the video but I did have some fun playing the uh the beta so for now I would probably recommend playing playing the uh, Battlefield Hardline when it comes out most of you guys if you if you're a multiplayer addict you'll probably get it because uh, I don't know, there's uh it's coming out uh, soon, uh, next month or the month after. So, what if you played the beta? What you saw, it's probably about what you're gonna get. I would say, even if the the build's a couple months old, it's not that big of a difference. I would say. So, yeah, that's uh, that's it for uh, that's it for the uh, my ping of the week this week. So, so let's move on to uh, the new segment from last week, kickstarting it. Alright, so if you didn't listen to the show last week, basically I started a new segment in my show, it's called Kickstarting It. Every week I select, I go on Kickstarter or similar similar websites, and I choose one game and promote it to you guys, or show it, or make you guys discover it, so if you got an extra $5, stuff like that, you can... You can give a couple bucks to promote a game. It's always fun to try to uh, promote some, some indie games that... Probably a lot of you guys wouldn't see without these types of website and stuff like that. For this week, I selected the game. You, this game probably you know, some of you guys know. It's called Proje- Project Scissors Nightcry. <clears throat> it's uh, it's developed by uh, Playism Games. So far, as of uh, February 13th, there is uh, 1,389 backers. They're at, they're looking for three hundred thousand dollars. So far, from the same date, they have a hundred forty thousand dollars. Sorry, a hundred forty thousand four hundred fifty-five dollars accumulated. And the funding end on mo- the funding ends on Monday, February thirty-third, twenty-third. Sorry about that. February twenty-third, two thousand fifteen, at two at basically three a.m. Eastern time. And the game would be will be available on PC, so you can go check the, their page out on Kickstarter and their website. If you go on the article, which will be posted uh, usually at the same time as the podcast, you can go check out their Kickstarter page and their website. Uh, there's also on that article you can see a trailer for uh, for uh, Night Cry. So basically, Night Cry is a game set on a cruise ship named Ocean- Oceanus, uh, and weird events start. To happen, you must discover the, the the conspiracy and survive the Scissor Walker. You will also need the help to help survivors by calling them, but calling them on a cell phone. But this might get you noticed by the antagonists when, when doing so. You play as a college college student from North America. This horror game was created by Hifumi Kono, Kono the creator of Clock Tower of the Clock Tower series, and Takashi Shimizu, the director of The Grudge. Uh, what really caught my attention with this game is the antagonist. With a big pair of scissors, you must you must escape him at all costs and survive the cruise. Uh, what all, another thing is the art style is also very, very interesting to look at. Switching, there's also a um, a mode where um, when you're playing, you switch between search mode and escape mode which will be an interesting interesting modes to check out for when the game is funded so uh, if you guys are looking for a game to back go look at the trailer uh, which is on the article like I mentioned and uh, go check their kickstarter page and help them out and uh, if you would like to get your game 
your game featured on Kickstarter, please send me send us an email uh, at contact at metimegamer.com and just in the subject line uh, write down kickstarting it requests. So, uh, all right, so f- that's it for this week. Uh, I'll start wrapping off. So, thanks to Technoax for uh, Technoax royalty free music for the intro outro. Uh, thank you also to um, uh, uh, Mansardian for this week in news intro and Umfa from Ping of the Week intro. You can find these two guys at freesound.org. You can uh, also check out our affiliate, um, metimegamer.com forward slash affiliates. Uh, we got our Amazon affiliate links you can go check out. You know what Amazon is, so I won't go in full detail. Also, one, one thing I think I forgot to mention most of the time is when you uh, go on our affiliate links, uh, it doesn't change anything for you guys. So you click on the link, it just tells the the affiliate we're associated with that you came through our link. When you buy stuff, or even there's one, there's a couple of them, and they're even just clicking the link. It gives it, it it gives us uh, it help it, it gives us a bit of money. It doesn't change. It doesn't cost you more. It doesn't change anything in your experience, and uh, you'll help the website. Uh, get better as time progresses and everything like that so if you guys want to check that out every week i try to add a couple uh, some more interesting one related to gaming and stuff i find interesting so yeah you got amazon or, or amazon affiliates which you can check out we got for the states and canada we got uh, g2a.com which they they have uh, they specialize in uh, game codes for uh, game codes and uh, uh for uh, x for everything playstation xbox and pc uh, they they sell a lot of steam codes uh, which are all global unlock so and they got awesome deals so when steam's not having one of their crazy deals you can go check g2a.com uh, also you can go check out playasia.com so that's play-asia.com they what's good what's cool about them is they sell the what i think they specialize in is they have uh uh, Japanese title that might that have some uh, Japanese title that haven't released in in North America, which you can buy off through them and get it delivered here. We also have ThinkGeek.com, which uh, if you guys don't know what that is, it's an awesome site that sells geeky geek geek accessories. Like you can have the Doctor Who screwdrivers, you can have mugs with pictures of Star Wars, Star Trek T-shirts, anything you want. So uh, go check that out. One of my favorite links, tfury.com. So these guys, every day they have a new t-shirt designed for $11. They have uh, uh, it's um, community uh, community designs, which feature video games, TV shows, movies, all those kinds of reference, mishmash of different ones. So... Uh, and if you if one day you miss a shirt, well they have a they have a gallery which you can buy those shirts for eighteen dollars. So uh, yeah, go check that that out. You also we also have a UPlay store affiliate. You play Ubi, the Ubisoft store basically. Uh, you can go check that out through our link. And iTunes, you guys know what iTunes does, so click our link. So go go check out our affiliates, click our links, and uh, help us out. That's always great. You can find the podcast on Stitcher. Tune in iTunes and Audio Mac. Sorry. So if you guys so if you guys have any comments, suggestions, critiques, questions, topics for the ping of the week or anything else you can think of, just send an email to podcast and email at me time podcast at me time And uh, if you would like to place an ad on the podcast, please contact us at contact at me time if you'd like to follow Me Time Gamer, we're on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Me Time Gamer. You can also check us out at t- on Twitter at t- metimegamer.com. Uh, you can also check us out on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Me Time Gamer. Uh, so if you guys go check the YouTube page while I'm on the subject, you can, if you go check uh, the YouTube page, I uh, created a playlist for you guys so you can check out trailers, you can ch- go uh, check out the podcasts. And you can also go check the streams. Some sometimes I st- uh, I'll stream on Twitch, so you guys can. I and I try to post most of the videos on YouTube after, so you guys can check them them out. And talking about Twitch, you can uh, check us out at twitch.tv/meetimegamer. 
Uh, you can also check out my articles at GambitCon.com where they specialize in video games, TV shows, movies, and anime. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'll let you guys go for this week and uh, just go out there, play some awesome games, and uh, speak to you next week, guys. Have a great one.